So this video is going to be a brief explanation of what brake traction control is and how it works using this JB74 Jimny. Now I've put the vehicle in what we term a cross axle situation and that means the suspension is flexed up because most of the weight is taken on the front left wheel and the rear right wheel. Now one of the things about a tyre is that the more weight on a tyre the more grip it has and there's not a lot of weight on this tyre therefore it doesn't have much grip. There's quite a lot of weight on this tyre therefore it has a lot of grip and if I go to the back you can see that there's not a lot of weight on, on this tyre here so it doesn't have much grip at all. Now we've got the motor in the front and then that drives both um, front and rear wheel, front and left and right wheels and the same at the back. That does so through something called a differential. I've got another video where I explain exactly what that is. But for the purposes of this video, all you need to know is that a differential tries to turn the wheel which is easiest to turn. Now the wheel which is easiest to turn is the one with the least grip on it, which is this one here. And at the back, it's the one, um, that one at the rear left. So what I'm gonna do is really trust the driver who's not gonna run me over and just get her to just gently increase the revs and you'll see what I mean. So revs up. So let's bring the revs up. A bit more. That's it. Yep, a little bit less. Okay. Keep going. Keep going. Right, so what we've got here is we've got the wheel spinning here and we've got the wheel spinning at the back. And the reason that's happening is because the differential is spending, sending all of the uh, drive, in effect, spinning this wheel uselessly. And the same at the back. So the vehicle's not going anywhere. That tire spinning, that tire spinning. What we want, we want some torque or drive to go to this wheel here and the diagonal on the other side so we can actually move the vehicle forwards. Now, the way brake traction control works is this. There's sensors um, at each of the wheels and it detects how quickly this wheel is moving relative to that wheel. When the computers detect that one wheel is spinning much faster than another one, it will actually start to apply the brakes on this wheel only. That increases the resistance of this wheel and then the differential starts to send drive or we can torque to that wheel and then we can actually come forwards. So what I'm going to do now is get out of the way and get the driver to increase the revs and you'll see that the brake traction control system will start to brake those individual wheels and that will send torque to the wheels with traction and the vehicle will drive up and out of the problem it's in at the moment. So keep an eye on the front right and rear left wheels. You can see that they're spinning quite slowly. As the driver increases the throttle, the wheels spin quicker. The ECU, the computers, realise that the wheels are spinning quicker than the ones which aren't moving and applies the brake to those wheels only. The vehicle moves forwards and off you go. This brake traction control isn't very good, but it's better examples later in the video. So we've got our model of a four-wheel drive here. We've got the front differential, centre differential, that's locked out, doesn't um, affect anything here, and the rear differential. I'm only going to focus on the rear axle for the purposes of explaining what brake traction control is. So I'll start the model up, and there's equal resistance with the left and the right wheels, and the differential always equalises the amount of torque or turning force that will go to either axle either wheel there so both wheels always get exactly the same amount of torque. Now if I introduce some resistance here make this wheel harder to turn by putting this with the wood against it what happen what's happened there is that I've made this wheel harder to turn um, so that wheel is now easier to turn and it takes very little turning force to just rotate that wheel around in the air but the amount of turning force or torque that wheel takes is as much as gets applied to this wheel over here. And if we were off-road, then this wheel could be up against a rock or rut or something like that, going nowhere. That wheel could be perhaps in the air or with low traction and just uselessly spinning. 
So what brake traction control does, it detects, the computers detect the relative speed of wheels on an axle. And the computers would say, well hang on, this wheel's spinning very fast, and this wheel's not moving at all, therefore we're probably stuck. And it would also take into account things like the engine speed, the throttle position, the speed of the front wheels, a few other things there. But basically the main input is how fast this wheel is travelling that wheel. So the computers will go, there's something wrong here, this is going too fast relative to that. And what the computers then do is then they start to apply the brakes to that wheel. And I'm going to do that in effect with my finger here. We start to slow apply that and you can see that the other wheel starts to move. Now what's happening there is I've made this wheel harder to turn so I have increased the torque required for this wheel to move and because of that, because the differential equalises the amount of torque, then because more torque is required on this wheel, then more torque gets sent to that wheel and then that's enough to overcome the resistance of the block of wood here. And you'll see that in the video clip shortly. You see a wheel spin, the computers will break that wheel and then the other wheel will continue to turn and that's typically the wheel with traction. So here we've got a Suzuki Grand Vitara and Suzuki, yeah, they don't really do a great job of traction control but it does mean that you can easily see the wheel being braked and torque applied to the opposite wheel and then the vehicle comes to, continues to move forwards. Now we've got a Mitsubishi Pajero, this has a much more effective brake traction control system so you can see that it's less jerky, there is still a little bit of wheel spin but not too much and momentum is easier to maintain as we come up this very rutted climb. Now this is a 200 series which has brake traction control that is effective but also smooth. You'll see that only just the wheel start to spin and then the vehicle smoothly moves forward, it's quite effective. Here's Toyota's traction control again on a Prado 150. You can see again barely any wheel spin, very effective at stopping that wheel spin and sending torque to the opposite wheel and the vehicle continues to drive. And then we've got a Discovery 5 or L462, look at that front right wheel. Again very effective early intervention with any wheel spin and smooth and that really does work very well by directing torque to the other wheel and that's quite a steep hill it's on at the moment so you can see just how well that's working compared to the Suzuki which is much rougher and agricultural in comparison. Now pretty much all modern four-wheel drives and SUVs have different driving modes and they recalibrate the electronics such as stability control and of course brake traction control. Examples is Land Rover's adaptive terrain system, terrain response, Toyota's got um, multi-terrain select and so on. In the case of this Forester we've got X mode and that varies the brake traction control as you will see in these videos. So same muddy hill, same driver, same technique except three different modes of Subaru's X mode with three different brake traction control calibrations. Take a look at the amount of wheel spin there is in each mode and that gives you an idea of the differences you get from different driving modes. Now we've talked about brake traction control so far but I want to go over three types which are often lumped often by four-wheel drive instructors into just traction control. Brake traction control we have covered in all my years of testing and driving and leading trips with four-wheel drives I've never seen a situation where this needs to be disabled it is good however what is bad is the next type which is engine traction control. Now this is what you don't want off-road because that detects when all the wheels are slipping or most of them and reduces engine power. Now, when you're going up a sandy slope or a muddy slope or something like, like that, that can actually significantly reduce your engine power at the point you most need it and that's why this is terrible for off-road use. Typically engine traction control is disabled when you lock a centre deer for put a vehicle into four-wheel drive etc um, whereas brake traction control control isn't disabled when that happens. The other type of traction control is, is really stability control and that is something which is designed to combat understeer and oversteer so when a car will just um, lose the back end or plough straight on it applies individual brakes and also if required will actually reduce the throttle as well. Again 
stability control is typically reduced or entirely disabled when you lock a center diff or put a vehicle in four-wheel drive or certainly low range. There's also typically a button you can press to further reduce it. So three different types of traction control system. Don't get them mixed up. And if someone says whatever about traction control, say which type of traction control are you talking about and watch the confused expression on their face, then get them to watch this video. Uh, we're going to do that demonstration again and at this point we're just demonstrating how the traction systems work. We're not trying to say how to drive a four-wheel drive effectively off-road. So the driver's just going to edge forward. So you can see we've got diagonal wheels with little weight on them and therefore little grip and just going to increase the revs now and that's going to start to get that look at those wheels being braked and then the vehicle moves forwards. Now over here the same is going to happen and you can see that those diagonal wheels are spinning and we're just going to slowly 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 increase the revs look at that right front wheel get braked a bit more a bit more and more revs more revs and the vehicle starts to move forwards and keep more revs there we go beautiful and same thing again here and you can see the brake traction control pulls it through beautifully done now here's another view of the Jimmy going up the hill it's being deliberately driven poorly, i.e. coming to a stop and then increasing revs to move. This is not how you should drive a four-wheel drive, but we're doing it just to demonstrate how things work. We'll drive the hill properly in a moment. So this is going through the rut, which is not the Suzuki line, but just correct use of momentum. So you see the vehicle won't actually come to a halt. We're just using just a little bit more momentum just to keep things flowing. Okay, now we're going to demonstrate the Suzuki line. We're going to try from the driver's left first, and that's because the vehicle's so narrow, then we can actually demonstrate um, that we're going to actually avoid the first part of the rut. So we get on to the second part of the rut. So this is just going slowly and using placement of the vehicle to avoid cross axling. You can see that we've just got straight past the first part where um, the vehicle was cross axled, and now you can see that that next part hasn't worked and the vehicle starting to slide in so that hasn't quite worked for us in this situation so what we might do now is just back the vehicle down and have a go from the other side all right so now what we're going to do is demonstrate the Suzuki line we're just going to go slowly but because the Suzuki is so narrow then we can actually offset the line and pretty much actually avoid um, the worst of the ruts whereas a bigger vehicle just has to put its wheels straight into the rut so let's see how the Suzuki line goes Okay, so what we're going to do now is take the hard line with the wheels in maximum ruts, but we've got cross axle differential locks engaged front and rear. We're going to be able to go slowly and look, there's going to be no wheel spin at all, just super slow and see how controlled that is and see just how slowly the cross axle lockers allow the vehicle to go. So I hope you found this video useful. If you've got any questions, please drop them in the comments section and thank you for watching.